Welcome to the Guest Prep Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Also, if you have a question um, directed to a specific institution, feel free to add their name to within your question so they know it's directed to them. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within the week at the same website where you registered. Now, I would like to turn it over to our first presenter, the University of Texas at Austin. Awesome, everyone. Hello. I'm going to go ahead and just share my screen and make sure these settings are all set up. Um, if somebody can just let me know if I'm sharing in the notes section, let, let me know. Um, sometimes my computer. Veronica, you are. Please see the notes. It is. Okay, great. Let me flip that. My screen does what it wants to half the time. Perfect. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Veronica Pena. And I'm the director of the Houston Admission Center for the University of Texas at Austin. If you did not know, we have a Houston office here. I hope a few of you were able to join our presentation a few weeks ago, or actually last week. Um, but today I'm going to share with you a little bit of information about the University of Texas at Austin and cover our admissions process. Uh, overall, we are a large institution. We have about 170 different fields of studies for you to pursue at UT. You can see a list of them all here. Students, I highly encourage you to really dive in to what your major might be at UT Austin. And I would encourage you to check out our Wayfinder website on our admissions website. So if you go to admissions.utexas.edu, in the search, you can type in Wayfinder, and you can see a list of all of our majors and learn more about what these programs actually mean, what types of careers go with them. Um, and when you apply to the university, uh, we want to see that interest in that first choice major. And so I do encourage you to check them out before you start that application process. We do have a School of Undergraduate Studies uh, where you can go in undeclared, focus on that basic core curriculum, and then work with your academic advisors to go into a particular field after that first year or first semester if you wanted to. We also have pre-med and pre-law services. So going into pre-med or pre-law, you can major in anything you want to, but we have academic advisors to make sure you're on the right track to get to med school, to get to law school. We also have a few honors programs that you can apply for as well. You'll see this option on your application. Um, because we have a very short amount of time, I'm not going to go into all of these honors programs, but I will tell you, I encourage students to apply for them uh, to be able to get involved in certain research initiatives, certain lecture series, um, and have some smaller classroom time um, on our campus. Uh, overall, we are a large institution, like I mentioned, about 53,000 students on our campus from our graduate and undergraduate students. However, our student to faculty ratio is 1901 and 60% of our classes do have 30 students or less than them. So you will get that small feel, even though we're at a large institution. Our retention rate from freshman year to sophomore year is about 96%. So students are not only enjoying their time in Austin, but are academically successful. Our four-year graduation rate is one of the highest in Texas, and it is at 72%. So we're gonna make sure you are successful once you get on our campus. Now I'm gonna to talk to you briefly about how to apply to the institution. We take a holistic review. We're looking at that whole picture when it comes to your application. We're not just looking at one part of your application versus another. We're looking at absolutely everything. We're looking at what you're bringing to the table, what experiences you have or have not had. Uh, we wanted to know about you. So be detailed on your application and focus on your first choice major. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, now we do have automatic admission and I know at your high schools that's gonna be a very small number. So if you are a senior applying or even a junior next year applying as a, as a senior next year, we will automatically admit the top 6% of your class. Uh, we do admit students outside of automatic admission and we are gonna take that holistic approach. So we are looking at absolutely everything. Here is just an overview of our application checklist. I do encourage you to check out our admissions website for a breakdown of all of these application items. Students, you can request a fee waiver on your application. You can indicate to us that you are gonna send us a fee waiver and then we'll just go from there. About 24 to 48 hours after you submit your application, you actually will get access to your My Status portal. 
your portal will tell you what we have on file and what we are missing for you. I also will let you know if your application fee was automatically waived. So be sure you're checking your my status. Uh, on your application items, like I mentioned, be detailed, focus on that first choice major, tell us about your passions, what you wanna do, your interests, and put that all down on your application. This year, when it comes to the SAT or ACT test score, uh, for our students that are seniors applying, we have suspended the SAT or ACT test score requirement. So you do not need to send us that test score. You can if you want to, or you can decide that you don't want to. Either way, it's acceptable. We holistically review. So we're not just gonna be looking at that test score. In fact, you don't have to send in that test score. Students are not at an advantage or disadvantage if they decide to send us a test score or not. So it's totally up to you. We recognize there's a lot of challenges with taking those exams right now. And so we want you to be safe and use your best judgment as far as if you wish to send that score or not. Again, either way is acceptable, okay? Um, and then you'll see that a little bit more of those optional items. You can send in an expanded resume as well or two letters of recommendations. Um, and then if you apply to UT, and if you're not admitted for any reason, it's a possibility we offer you a program to come to us at a later time. And so that program can be our coordinated admissions program or PACE. If you apply to UT, it's a possibility we offer you these programs. I do wanna just quickly go over our deadlines. I think I have about a minute left. And so our application final deadline is December 1st. You have from now to December 1st to apply. However, we have a November 1st priority deadline, which means you have all completed items in by November 1st. We will provide you with our admission decision or notification about your decision by February 1st. We don't have early action. We don't have early admissions. We don't have first come first serve. Overall, if you apply by November 1st, you simply just hear back sooner. We don't give a higher preference about admissions to those that apply sooner than later. Your final deadline is gonna be December 1st. Um, and I do just wanna cover one of our Texas advanced commitments, so for if your family's in adjusted gross income, if your family's adjusted gross income is 65000 or less, we will cover the cost of tuition. And so that is our Texas advanced commitment. I am going to go ahead and wrap this up, though. And if you have additional questions, talk to us in the chat room. We will be here for the remainder of the time. Uh, thanks for having us. And here's our contact information real quick. Have a great day, y'all. Great, thank you so much. Um, our next presenter is the University of Alabama. At this time, if um, you wanted to go ahead and um, share your screen while she's doing that, I just wanna remind everyone, please make sure you are typing the institution's name if you are uh, directing the question to one specific institution or you can leave it general um, to get responses from um, the other institutions as well. So the University of Alabama. Hi guys, um, so my name is Megan Borden. I am the regional recruiter for the University of Alabama. Um, I am located here in Texas, in Houston, Texas, to kind of be a little bit more convenient for you all as far as if you have questions regarding the University of Alabama and the application process. Um, the University of Alabama is located in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. We're kind of a rural urban mixture. We're also the state school for the University of Alabama, known as the Capstone College uh, for, the state of, uh, for the state of Alabama as well. Um, we were founded in 1831 and we had a record enrollments past year of a little over 38,000 students. As you can see, um, with our uh, Bama bound students, we actually have over 50% of our student population is from out of state. Um, and top 10 Bama bound students attending the University of Alabama, number four, as you can see, is Texas. So we do have a very high um, presence of Texans at the University of Alabama, and we have anywhere from 100 to 150 Houstonians that attend the University of Alabama as well. So finding a roommate or finding someone that you can carpool with is super simple. Um, we do have undergraduate admissions um, for this year due to COVID. Um, the application process is very simple. It's on our website. You can apply on our um, there's no essay, no resume, no recommendation letter, so you're welcome and roll tide. Uh, we have gone test optional due to COVID, so all we need is your high school transcript and your application submitted to us. Once we receive everything, you should have a very quick turnaround, anywhere from um, a couple of weeks to have a decision. To be eligible to be considered for scholarships, you must have your scholarship application submitted to us 
um, before or by January 15th, and you have to be accepted to the University of Alabama before then. So you must be admitted before or by January 15th to be eligible for scholarship uh, consideration. We have a ton of majors and nine different colleges within our university. Uh, some of our popular colleges um, and majors at the University of Alabama, College of Engineering, College of Business, Nursing, Communications, um, Interior Design and Hospitality under our College of, Communi um, College of Human Environmental Sciences, just to name a few. And then we also have some pre-professional programs pre-law, um, pre-med, for example, as well, that are very popular, uh, especially for my out-of-state students that I've seen. Um, we have a multitude of internship opportunities for students as well that they can get involved with. We're top 10 in the nation, number one in the SEC for internship placement, so getting a job um, after uh, graduation is very high. Uh, just for example, 98% of our students uh, graduating from the College of Nursing and Engineering already had a job or in the process of being hired and then 97% of our students graduating from the College of Business already had a job or in the process of being hired at the time of graduation. Um, discovering your passion at the University of Alabama. We do have a misconception um, that we are just Greek life because we do have a high Greek presence at the university. Um, however, we are only 30 5% of our student population is Greek life. Um, we have over 650 plus organizations and clubs that you can get involved with. So to make your mark and get involved and uh, acclimated on campus, we highly encourage you to get involved on in one of our uh, different uh, clubs or organizations. And if we don't have something you're interested in, you can always start your own. Uh, living on campus, if you are a senior and you have already been accepted to the University of Alabama, you can go ahead and apply um, for housing. The housing application is open to our seniors um, that have been admitted to Alabama. Uh, freshmen are required to live on campus their first year. After that, they can choose to either live on campus or off campus. And we have traditional, non-traditional residential halls and dormitories, so you have different options to choose from as well. Um, our scholarships, when applying to the University of Alabama, we do have merit-based scholarships that are automatically awarded just for applying to Alabama. These are our merit-based scholarships. Um, they are based off of your test score and your GPA. However, due to COVID, we know that many students haven't been able to take a test or be able to retest. So we are still awarding the same amount of money for our merit scholarships for a competitive scholarship that um, all you have to do is fill out the scholarship application. You do not have to have a test score. And even if you do have a test score, you can still be considered for the competitive scholarships um, and potentially receive more than what you would be receiving from the merit based on your test score and GPA. Again, if you don't have a test score, you're still eligible for the competitive scholarships and we're just looking at your GPA at this point. So any students with a 3.0 or higher is eligible to apply for the competitive scholarships and is highly encouraged to do so. But you must be accepted to Alabama first before you can apply. Um, my contact information, if you wanna take a screenshot or um, take a picture of this, I have uh, my contact information listed here in the event that you have any questions, wanna set up a tide chat. We are doing in-person campus tours along with um, virtual campus tours, whichever one you feel more comfortable with. If you would like to do an in-person campus tour and maybe do something a little bit more in depth so you can kind of see uh, the college or major of your choice um, that you're planning to uh, uh, major in when you come to Alabama, I would be more than happy to get that set up for you. So just let me know. Other than that, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining and roll tide. Wonderful. The next presenter will be the University of Connecticut. As they are getting their screen share. Just reminding everyone, um, the Q&A um, is open, so feel free to drop any questions you may have. So I'll hand it over to the University of Connecticut. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Alexandra Fergola, and I'm the Texas Admissions Officer for UConn. Um, I graduated from UConn myself back in 2018, so hopefully I can give you some of what that student experience is like. So to get started, we are located in a town called Storrs, Connecticut. Storrs is our main campus, but as you can see, we have four regional campuses. Those are typically where in-state students will go, so we'll just focus on Storrs for today. Storrs is located an hour and a half from Boston and two and a half hours from New York City. We've got buses that go to both cities every single weekend so you can go off and explore. And there's even an organization called Subak that does bus trips to both. So they've gone to see the Red Sox play up in Boston. They've gone to the Brooklyn Botanical Gardens and they've gone to see the New York Jets play. So you can easily go explore the surrounding areas. 
We have 19,000 undergraduate students just on our stores campus alone, so we are considered a, a pretty large university. In terms of academics, we have lots of options for you. We've got over 110 majors to choose from and even more minors. We have our College of Agriculture, Health and Natural Resources, which is um, the house for like our allied health sciences program, animal sciences, dietetics, nutritional sciences. We have our School of Business and School of Engineering, which have the traditional business and engineering programs. We have our School of Education, which houses anyone who wants to be a teacher. It is also a five-year combined bachelor's master's program. So in five years, you can get your master's degree. We have our School of Fine Arts, which is our acting and our art and our digital media and design program, our music. And we even have a pu puppetry major. So if you know anyone who wants to do puppetry, we are one of two schools in the country to do it. So come on and join us in Connecticut. The School of Fine Arts also has a portfolio-based review, so if you do plan on applying to any fine arts majors, you will have to submit a por portfolio with it. Next up, we've got our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, which is our largest school on campus. We have the traditional sciences like the biology and chemistry and physics, as well as English and languages and communication and um, psychological sciences. So a lot of our students end up being in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Our last three programs are our School of Nursing, School of Pharmacy, and School of Social Work. The School of Nursing and School of Pharmacy are direct entry programs, so as a freshman you know you're in that program and you never have to reapply. The School of Social Work is a junior entry program, so you'll apply in during your sophomore year and continue on your social work program. Um, we have our individualized major program, which is a create your own major. So if you don't know what you want to do, you can create a major or you can come in undecided and undecided students have an opportunity to explore all of the different areas. We've got 24 Division I sports teams and all UConn students get free admission to every single sporting event. Whether it's hockey, football, soccer, baseball, you are in the game for free. You just swipe your student ID and you're good to go. We also have over 700 clubs and organizations, things like our breakdancing club, our skydiving club, our dog spotters of Yukon, where they'll post pictures of dogs on campus so you can go run around and get some pet therapy. We've got our Disney club and our marching band, sororities, fraternities, our cheer team, our dance team. You can even be the mascot so you can wear the husky suit and run around at the basketball games cheering on our team. There are also 135 study abroad experiences. They go from semester long programs, year long, summer, winter, any time of year you can go abroad. There's even programs like our semester at sea where you spend a whole semester on a cruise ship. Um, these study abroad experiences are open to all majors. So engineering, nursing, pharmacy, education majors, it doesn't matter what your program is, you can study abroad. Some of the fun things we've got going on on campus is our Oozball Mud Volleyball Tournament. So as you can see that lady right in the front covered head to toe in mud, that is from Oozball. You get to play with five other friends and you get completely disgusting, but it is the most fun you'll ever have. We also have our One Ton Sunday event down in the left corner. There is a dinghy sized boat filled with ice cream and you get a bucket and you just fill it with as much ice cream that you can possibly get in there. Again, also disgusting, but amazing. Uh, we have our homecoming carnival. We have our Husky Thon dance marathon. It is 18 hours where you dance for 18 hours straight and you don't sit down. We even had our Yukonic music festival where Khalid was a headliner, Lil Uzi was a performer, um, and students were able to audition to perform on the same stage as these artists. In terms of application, we are also going test optional this year and for the following three admission cycles. So you will not be um, put at a disadvantage if you decide not to send in your test scores or if you don't have them. It's completely up to you. We review holistically, so we'll take a look at everything. We'll look at your transcripts, your letters of recommendation, and anything that you submit to us. We also have fee waivers, so if you are eligible for an SAT, ACT waiver, or um, free or reduced lunch, we will accept that for an, an application waiver. In terms of deadlines, all students are automatically considered for merit scholarships as long as you apply by our January 15th deadline. December 1st is our priority consideration for merit scholarship and honors, so try to get it in before then, but if you can't, January 15th works perfectly fine for us. And March 1st is the day that everyone will receive their admissions decision, regardless of when you apply. Here is all of my information. Um, if you wanna take a picture of that, send me any questions you have. I'll be working directly with all Texas students. 
Um, so I know that was a lot of information, but go Huskies. Thank you so much. Um, our next presenter is the University of Massachusetts Lowell. So as we are getting ready to share the screen, um, again, just another reminder, um, any questions you have to any of the previous presenters or any of the presenters that have not presented yet, feel free to just drop them in the Q&A. And we'll go ahead and pass it over to the University of Massachusetts, Lowell. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Daisy Ogonato. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at the University of Massachusetts, Lowell. Lowell is part of the five campus system um, that makes up the UMass schools. There's UMass Amherst, UMass Boston, UMass Lowell, UMass Dartmouth, and then UMass Medical. So this is an aerial view of our campus. Um, we have a really unique campus system in which it's three separate parts of campus that makes up all of Lowell. Um, Lowell is 45 minutes north of Boston. We make sure that students have transportation to get into the Boston area if they need to, um, as well as making sure they have transportation to get around Lowell as well as the rest of the Merrimack Valley where we are located. So for academics, we offer the College of Education, the College of Fine Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences, the Francis College of Engineering, the Kennedy College of Sciences, Manning School of Business, Zuckerberg College of Health Sciences, and finally the Honors College, which is an umbrella college that encompasses all majors. In total, we have 120 plus programs of study, 40 plus master's degree programs, as well as 30 plus doctoral degree programs so that students can continue their education and get what we like to call the triple river hawk. We are the river hawks. <laughs> so with the Honors College, you get all of these wonderful perks that are listed here. Um, all of the UMass schools do offer the Commonwealth Honors Program. When you're first looking at applying to the university, we automatically look at your application to see if you're eligible for honors. And if you are, you will then be welcomed into the college and can then choose to opt into the program. We also offer quite a few student support programs um, in order to make sure that the transition from high school to college goes smoothly for students. We also have a fantastic program called the Riverhawk Scholars Academy, which is specific to first generation students. Um, it basically puts you into a cohort of other students who are first generation themselves. You get a lot of wonderful perks similar to the Honors College. And in addition, you get paired up with a faculty or staff who was either a first generation um, student themselves or they are a first generation um, advocate. We also have a really wonderful 95% job placement rate. Um, this is due in part to our co-ops and internships that students can take part in. If you don't know what a co-op is, it's basically where you take a semester off um, or longer and you go and work in a specific field. We work really closely with a lot of companies such as Tesla, Raytheon, Microsoft, Google. Um, there's a lot of opportunity for students in doing that. We also really believe in hands-on learning on campus. We have about 300 different plus countries that students can um, go to with the study abroad program, a clinical and practicum experience that can be done in the city of Boston, including Boston Medical or Boston Children's, which are some of the best hospitals in the world. Um, service learning opportunities, about 275,000 hours of volunteer service a year. We also have a program called Difference Makers in which it's similar to the TV show Shark Tank in which you come up with an idea or concept. You can then pitch it to the university and win $50,000 to get your own startup company beginning. Um, so a lot of students are taking advantage of that and it's just a really fun and entrepreneurial thing that we do here on campus. So for campus life, we have over 275 different clubs and organizations on campus that will range from knitting club to Quidditch to underwater hockey or book club. Um, so there's lots of different activities that students can engage in on our campus and they're always very, very active. In addition, 30 plus intramural and club sports for students who are athletically minded and they wanna get involved in the different offerings that we have. 11 different residence halls with housing available for all four years. So for students who um, are planning on living on campus all four years, they have the options of singles, doubles, triples, quads, hotel style, suite style, and apartment style housing. Um, in addition to that, we have 20 plus themed living learning communities that can do either with a specific sport or 
academics or something that you enjoy doing. So if you're really big on the environment, we have spaces for that. Um, we have WISE, which is for women in science and engineering. Um, there's the Hall of Justice, which is for criminal justice majors, uh, creative spaces for art and music. So there's lots of opportunities within these LLCs. And we found that they have not only helped students academically, but they have helped them socially as well. 18 different eateries across campus. Um, Sorry to break it to anyone who is a big Dunkin's fan. I know it's weird, but we're a New England school that has a Starbucks. Uh, so if you're really interested in the, the different offerings we have, we have three large dining halls, Starbucks, Subway, Sal's Pizza, Freshies, et cetera. Uh, more than 50 ba bands and ensembles on, concert, on, on campus that put on different concerts. Um, and students can also take part in those activities. We put on two full-scale theater productions every year. Uh, they're doing a really cool radio play this year. Obviously, because of COVID, they can't have a traditional show, so they're going to do something really different. And then the Songa Center is our entertainment venue on campus, which puts on events throughout the year. In recent years, we've had um, Oprah, Meryl Streep, uh, Steve Aoki, Drake, Wiz Khalifa, lots of big name artists that have come through our entertainment venue. In addition to that, tickets tend to be discounted for students. So if you wanted to go to see a particular artist perform, you do have the opportunity to not pay really, really high prices that someone outside of campus would pay. And we are Division I, um, so we take part in America East as well as uh, Hockey East. Sorry to break it to anyone who's a really big football fan, we do not offer football. We put all of our strength and power into hockey, um, and that's just really one of our biggest sports on campus. Um, in this picture here, you can see the blue field that is called our Wicked Blue Field, because again, we're from New England, so we got to use the word wicked and everything. Um, I think we're one of two schools in the country that has a blue field, so that's a draw for a lot of students. But our big sports, hockey, basketball, soccer, et cetera, we offer a lot and you just have to reach out to the coaches in order to be recruited. So we have students from 50 states and 122 nations with 38% of our students identifying as students of color. So very diverse background at our school. We're also one of the fastest um, growing schools in New England. We've renovated about 16, we've built 16 new buildings in the past decade. Um, so we have a lot going on on campus. I think my time is up, <laughs> but if you have more questions, please feel free to post them in the chat and you can always reach us at our website, uml.edu slash admissions. Well, thank you so much. Um, our next institution is the University of Oregon. Well, let me make sure my mic is on first. <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. So my name is Olivia Manwin. I'm a regional admissions counselor for the University of Oregon. I graduated from the University of Oregon in 2014 from the College of Education, and I live here in Houston. I imagine part of this Texas region as well as Louisiana. I'll walk you through a little bit about where the University of Oregon is located, the different programs and things we have, what life is like as a duck, and talk about some admission policies and dates that you need to know that are coming up. So Eugene, Oregon is uh, located in the Pacific Northwest. U of O is a public liberal arts research institution that's located in Eugene. We're about two hours south of Portland, which is our largest city, and we're an hour from both the coast and the Cascade Mountains. We have two major airports that you can fly in when you visit, one in Eugene and one in Portland. And it's a really a lot of opportunities for students to travel and explore. There's a lot of outdoor recreation. So by the time that it takes you in Texas to drive from Houston to Dallas, you can be in, in another state in both directions, Washington or California. And if you're driving eight hours, you're already in another country in Canada, which in Texas from Houston, you'd probably still be over in El Paso. So there's a lot of close things as well. Voodoo Donuts started up here in Oregon. I know that we've it's expanded down into Texas. So if you are in Oregon, you can see the original Voodoo Donuts, was, which is in Portland. And we have one in downtown Eugene as well. Our campus is 295 acres and we have been rated Eugene as a number one green city, which is based on factors of air quality, recycling, transportation, and you see that everywhere you go on campus. We do have 5,000 trees on our campus with over 500 species. So our campus is called an arboretum, which is just a fancy way of saying a museum of trees. It takes about 15 minutes for students to walk across campus from one end to the other. And around our campus, as you can see there in the background, we do have 250 miles of hiking and biking trails. 
We were once named the world's greatest city for the arts and outdoors. We have a lot of local artists that perform. We have beautiful museums that are on our campus and a lot of outdoor recreation activities and a center where you can even rent kayaks and bikes and just really explore, which we really encourage our students to do when they are in Oregon. Some big differences from Texas and Oregon is here we do have tropical seasons. We have um, hurricane season, we have torrential rain, downpour, and flash flooding. That doesn't happen in Oregon. It does rain, but the rainfall is comparable to New York, and it is more spread out, and the rain is not as hard. Getting into our campus, the university has around 19,000 undergraduate students, which classifies us as a mid-sized institution. For our students, being a mid-sized institution means you get the best of both worlds. So if you're seeking a large school atmosphere, students have the uh, have that by exploring our over uh, 325 academic programs, groundbreaking research opportunities, of course, our NCAA Division I athletics, or by traveling and doing our study abroad programs. For students seeking a smaller community environment, we have a high emphasis on small class size across campus with our median class size of 20, and we have a 16 to 1 student teacher ratio. So there's really something for everyone. We have students from all counties in Oregon, all 50 states in over 100 countries. So when you take classes at the University of Oregon, you're getting exposure to students from all over the country and all over the world. We are a tier one national public research institution and this is something that we are so proud of. We're part of the AAU, which is Association of American Universities. This is really special to us because, we, uh, because we're given this title because of the amount of impactful research that we do. Being a research university matters because the work we do creates the foundation for major advances in areas such as health, medicine, and communication. As an undergraduate student, you get to be involved in a lot of research on our campus. And even though we have a picture of someone here in a lab, a lot of our research happens across different majors. Actually, our College of Education receives the most funding on our campus for research. We offer 240 majors, minors, concentrations, and programs at the University of Oregon across our nine schools and colleges. I did see some people in the chat talking about um, law programs, and we do have a law school at the University of Oregon. And for students who are involved in our Clark's Honors College, we have a special pro program called 3 plus 3. So if you're in the Clark's Honors College, you do three, pro three years in the Honors College, and then you do three years in the law school. So in six years, you have both of those degrees. Popular programs that we have at the University of Oregon, our College of Arts and Sciences has the most students population-wise. About 60% of our students are in that college. That houses anything from psychology, human physiology, data science, environmental studies, and then our business program as well. We're in the top 1% of business programs worldwide. We have a College of Design, which does require a separate application for some of those programs. A lot of our students go on to work with Nike and Intel. We have our College of Education, School of Journalism and Communication, School of Music of Dance, and then our graduate school. We also have a lot of opportunities for students to study abroad. We have more than 300 study abroad programs on campus. So whether you want to shadow a hospital in Ghana, or if you're into marine biology and you want to do, study tropical marine biology in Panama, there is a lot of places that students can go. And we recommend that you look on our site and you're able to search either by location or by program. No matter what you do at the University of Oregon, academics are very important, but we also want our students to get involved. So we do have over 300 clubs and we have sports year round. So we do have a strong uh, football, basketball, we're Track Town USA, we host the Olympic trials, we have our historic Hayward Field. So there's a lot of athletics that you can watch and root for the whole year. Our early action deadline coming up is November 1st, but it is non-binding. So as long as you apply by either November 1st or January 15th, you will get a decision and we are not worried about which one you apply for. We have the Oregon Guarantee this year, which says your tuition will not change for up to five years at the University of Oregon. And we are test optional. So um, even with our scholarships this next year, because of COVID and things, we will not use your scholarship or your test scores to give out scholarships. If you want some more information about the University of Oregon, you can uh, contact me and I'll put my email in the chat. Thanks. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, our next presenter is the University of uh, Mississippi, Ole Miss.
Hi guys, I'm so sorry. It took me like a second to find um, too many tabs open evidently. Best for last guys. So I'll, um, my name is Rocky. I am from the University of Mississippi. I'm so excited to be talking to you guys today. I am based here in Houston, Texas. I cover a majority of the state of Texas for the University of Mississippi. And I'm available um, very often for everything from um, Rebel Chats where we can Zoom one-on-one -on -one later and be able to really dive deep into them some of your passions and interests or one-on-one -on -one conversations where we can maybe meet in person with masks and um, have some coffee or something. So I'd love to meet with you and talk to you about everything from the admissions process to um, application, financial aid, housing, any of that stuff. So we were founded in 1848 and um, we are Mississippi's flagship institution, which means that we were the first comprehensive public research university in the state. We started with about 80 students and now we're up to about 17,000 undergrads. So that gives us a nice community feel, small size, but big university opportunities. We have students represented from all 50 states and all over the world. Um, Texas is our most popular place for students to be coming from outside of the state of Mississippi with about 10% of our incoming class coming from Texas every year. So that's really exciting. Um, we are the third smallest university in the SEC, so that does give you the opportunity to have that big sports feel, lots of name recognition and opportunities, while still having small class sizes and being able to see the people that you know on your way to and from your classes. Um, our average class size is about 34 students and our student faculty ratio is 17 to one. So that's something that we do take great pride in and hope you would love that as well. Uh oh. I didn't mean to do this. Can someone tell me what you see? It's just, it's uh, just the welcome uh, sign. Okay, then I am good. Um, my screen was on something else, thank you. So Oxford, Mississippi is a small town. We are in Northern Mississippi, only about an hour south of Memphis, Tennessee. If you think about going North and East from Houston, you would get to Oxford, Mississippi in about nine hours and it's the same distance North and West to Lubbock, Texas. So we're about the same as staying within the state of Texas, but you get a new opportunity, lots of new people and new experiences in Oxford. Um, Oxford is known as one of America's best college towns. It's a small town as well. We only have about 24,000 permanent residents in Oxford. So the people that you see at the grocery store, at your churches and things like that are also the people that you will be seeing on campus. It's super common to see your professors at a restaurant in town or the grocery store. So that's kind of an interesting way to kind of experience college life, very much overlapping that college experience with the city of Oxford. So academic schools and majors, we have over 100 different academic programs. If you don't know what you want to study from the beginning, we can do freshman studies, which is our undeclared major. You can go all the way through with several interdisciplinary programs, where, which are like a um, create your own major, combining different passions. So our largest academic college is the College of Liberal Arts. There are opportunities, it's the largest and the oldest, and there are, it's because there are so many different types of uh, programs that are in it. So everything from arts and sciences to social sciences, humanities, and health professions. So there's lots to choose from there. We also have a fantastic school of journalism and new media, as well as, um, one of the top 25 pharmacy programs in the nation and one of the top 10 accounting programs in the nation. So some great opportunities there. Um, School of Business Administration is very popular with our students. We are, um, if you look at all of the business and business associated majors, about half of our students are in a business or business associated major at the University of Mississippi. We are a top 50 public or a top 50 business school. So that is something that we're um, incredibly proud of. And our business school is direct admit. If you're admit to, admitted to the University of Mississippi, you are also admitted to the major of your choice with very, very, very few exceptions. So just to let you know that um, if you want to study business, you can start in business and finish in business without having to apply into it. Um, school of Applied Sciences is a opportunity to um, 
for students to focus on majors that have real world implications, such as nutrition, kinesiology, health, health sciences, social work. So the things that really can go out and help be change the world, be a change maker and really impact society. If you're interested in pre-professional areas, we have a lot of opportunities within that. Within that. So either um, having someone help you plan your path to law school or plan your path into med school. We have uh, great programs with that. Specifically, our Health Professions Advising Office helps from freshman year all the way through the application process. The students that take part in our Health Professions Advising Office are being admitted to med schools at double the rate of students that are not. So it's something that we would highly uh, recommend you getting involved with, it, with if you are interested. Education, we educate the most number of teachers in Mississippi, but of course that's not Texas. So there's um, not quite as many as there would be in Texas, but it is something that we are greatly, are very proud of. In our School of Engineering, again, direct admit. If you're admitted to the university, we do offer a direct admit into engineering or a pathway program into engineering, if that's what you're interested in studying. Special programs, these are the ones that are admit only that you have to apply to separately from the university or after you apply to the university to be able to get into. Arabic and Chinese languages, intelligence studies, pharmacy early entry. You can major in pharmacy without being pharmacy early entry, but if you do want a guaranteed spot in pharmacy, that's a great way to do it. Um, Croft Institute for International Studies, our Honors College, our Trent Lott Leadership Institution in Chinese. Am I already done? Student life, great opportunities, over 400 student organizations, very proud Rebel fans for all of our sports. Um, cost of attendance, it is a little more out of state, but it is something that we do a lot of scholarships and things to uh, give you a discount. And um, our newest scholarships have been announced already for this year. Housing on campus, all freshmen are required to live on campus for their first year. Um, applying is quick and easy. It's really just filling out your application and send it, send, sending us your transcripts through Common App or the Ole Miss Institutional App. That's it. If you have questions, this is my contact information. I'd love to set up a Rebel Chat with you or something later. Great, thank you so much. Um, you know, at this time we have just a couple minutes um, left. Um, you know, if you have any last minute questions uh, for the representatives, please feel free to um, drop those in the Q&A. Um, if they're not able to get to your question, just know that they will um, follow up with you um, at a later time and make sure they get you um, the information that you're seeking. So um, again, if you have any questions, please drop them um, in the Q&A. They are still answering um, those last minute questions that you may have. Um, also, one we um, just some last minute items. Um, once we conclude uh, this session, um, the window will will close, and there will be a very quick four question survey that we appreciate any feedback uh, that you can provide. Um, in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recordings as well as any other uh, session recordings that you've attended. So, if you just needed to um, remind yourself of some information or also gather um, the presenter's contact information. Um, you can do so by reviewing the recordings or feel free to uh, ask for that in the chat um, before, we, before we go, so before we conclude the session. Um, again, thank you. I just want to extend a thank you to uh, the panelists um, for your willingness to share some insightful information. And then also thank you for attending uh, this session. Um, any last questions that are coming in? Okay. Okay, feel free to drop in any, any questions. Okay, well, we'll conclude the session and thank you for attending.